hot. It's like 100 degrees. I know. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Check, check. Hey guys, it's Duane, and today I am with Diana. <laughs> and if you watch a lot of my vlogs, you have definitely seen her. But not recently, because you've been in LA pursuing your dreams, gosh dang it. <laughs> For this vlog, I wanted to interview Diana on her most recent pursuits in life. So I hope that you find some inspiration in her words and come along. Th that this is my better side. Oh, this side? No, no, no. This side? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my teeth are better on this side. You see, that's the thing. There's not as many gaps. <laughs> Hi, Diana. Hi. I would love to interview you about acting. Ah, acting is always what I wanted to pursue. Like since I was, I started acting for kicks when I was six or seven. I just did the uh, this theater camp every summer, and then um, when I was around 12, 13, I really wanted to do it for like my life. And so I went to NYU. I enrolled into NYU as an acting major, and I didn't like the program. So after a year, I quit the acting program, or I like took a leave of absence from the studio, but I had no intention of going back. I just pursued like a more academic based curriculum and was just modeling and sh shooting a bunch like taking lots of photos and then and I was like auditioning too but it was really hard to like audition and go to castings like and do my schoolwork and work and like do all these things all at once and then um, the week before finals of fall 2017 a lot of stuff happened I went in for an audition in New York that like I thought I bombed and I was like I'm not getting that and then like literally the next day there was a family emergency and I was like okay I have to go home like to LA like I can't finish school this is just not happening and so I got on a plane and went home and I was like all right I'm with my family and then the next week like the strangest thing happened where like I got a call back for the first audition I thought I had bombed um, with a director and I was like what the heck and it was uh, in LA and I was like oh my god if I had been in New York like doing finals definitely wouldn't have been able to go to this thing and I went in and like miracle I got it so then I was like okay I'm gonna be filming this movie now this is really cool I'm really excited like it happened all so quickly and it's very overwhelming you were literally the best thing in the world nuts. and like, the worst thing in the world yeah. happened at the same time it was crazy actually I was just like I don't know how to feel because like I'm really excited but also really depressed and okay I'm just gonna see where this thing takes me and it was great too because acting is kind of an escape like you, you get to live life as someone else and when you're living this life as someone else you, you don't really have time to think about your own life so you're not like oh what's happening you know, especially when you're shooting on location like we were filming in Mississippi so the last thing I was thinking about was like what was going on at home which was nice because I, I didn't thinking about what was going on at home was hard to do and it was you know it was a hard time for all of us in, the, in my family and so it was like nice I was like okay cool I get to like be this other girl but that, that doesn't last very long and then you go home and reality hits you again um, and but isn't that like also so awesome at the same time because like you know now from experience that when you're going through something really bad that something like amazing oh yeah can so. happen any second California went through its the largest fire in hist in California. That's the largest fire in California's history, like recorded fire. Um, it started in Ojai Valley, and my father, who lives in Ojai Valley, uh, his house, which had like all of my family stuff in it, burnt down, like to the ground. The house and everything in it was completely destroyed. We lost like everything. Um, luckily, my mom had all of our family photos um, in her apartment in in L.A. But like anything of like any sentimental value from childhood through college, because I had sent home like all of my stuff to LA too, to my dad's house, was just destroyed. It was really, like it's still like weird when I think about certain things I've lost, but I truly like 100% believe everything happens for a reason. And if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't have been in LA and like I wouldn't have been able to. Do your dream job. Yeah, but it was also even a wake up call. like. When I was in New York, I was kind of looking for an out. I wasn't feeling really happy there, and I just felt like I was doing too many things at once, and I didn't know how to, like, say no. You know, I was like, yes, 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 and then this thing happens, you're like, oh my God, what's important to me? It was so funny, too, because my final for my philosophy class was um, 
I was writing a, a, pa a paper on personal identity and I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Everything that had my personal identity, anything physical that represented who I was was gone. So I was like, I don't even know who I am. And all I, what I do know is that being in this classroom right now is so not what I want to be doing. So it was like this huge wake up call. Um, and when I was visiting my home, like visiting the, our burnt home for the first time with my mom, I got an email from my university that basically said I was on academic probation for not completing finals. And I was like, pretty sure I told you guys why I could not do finals, but this is why I left and why I'm never gonna come back. And that's when I knew then too, I was like, it's time to take a official leave of absence and like probably take my education mm -hmm. elsewhere. And also just focus 100% on what you wanna do. Like you just have to, no, like sometimes you have to burn a bridge to you know, put your heart and soul into what you really want to do. Obviously, I'm really fortunate that I can make an income modeling. Like, I know not everyone has that privilege, but um, it was just what I had. It was like I had to, I had to do what I had to do. And I'm really glad because, you know, the universe has been really, really good to me. And I've been really fortunate to have gotten work because it's really hard to get work as an actor. And I know how long and how hard people struggle and fight and like, I got really, really effing lucky. Like, I know that. <laughs> I'm not gonna be like, oh, how did this happen? I got really lucky. The three times I wrapped something, literally the day after I FaceTime my mom, I'm like, oh my God, mom, like, what if I never work again? Like, I should have stayed in school. I should be in school right now. And she's like, Diana, calm down. Like, you've literally been offset for a day. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't understand. And I start crying and I'm all flipped out. And like, sometimes I just get really, sad because I see all my friends that are going to be entering their final years in college or like they're graduating and going to grad school and I'm like I'm just this college dropout and they're like Diana you're working and I'm like no but you don't understand you know it's like it's yeah, this weird up and down and it's and when I'm not working it is this like there's the anxiety kicks in of like did I make the right choice did I make the right choice like what if I never work again but it's, it's just patience it's so much patience. I think reminding yourself that a lot of people who are like creative that's what we have to go through. It's like there's periods the waiting. of very, very like long downtime. Oh yeah, that was a very large bug. <laughs> it's like you have to be such a patient person and I'm such a not patient person. I, I just, I love, I love to be doing something, to be, things to be happening. So in the waiting periods, it's, it actually, it truly forces you to just sit with yourself and sit with the reality of yourself and you're like, okay. But it's amazing, <sighs> you just like learn about yourself. Like yeah, you and in a weird way, I'm like, I don't need to be in school to be learning. Mm -hmm. For me, I, I can, you know, I have a thirst for education, for knowledge, for, you know, learning new things. So it's not like I'm just gonna be like, oh, I'm not in school, I'm not working. I guess I'm just gonna sit around and do nothing all day. Like, I'm like, no, I'm gonna learn a new instrument. I'm gonna drive, I'm gonna see my siblings. I'm gonna go to, on hikes and I'm gonna just like make sure I'm doing something. I'm gonna work on my screenplay. Like, just force yourself to be creative, to take initiative and learn new things because I don't know when the next time I'm gonna be on set is. Like, I hope soon, but I don't know, so, you know. Gotta well, it's a struggle, but make it's, use of it's, the time. It's, the, it's a very exciting struggle. Oh yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm like today. The last few days have been very hopeful, and I'm like, all right, cool. Like hopefully soon, I'll be working again, and I will be proud of the time I was not working. I hope, <laughs> or I'll be like, you wasted so much time no, literally watching no. Brooklyn Nine Nine. <laughs> I recently had the privilege of working with Olivia Wilde. She's um, just had her an, on her first directorial debut, and she talked a lot about like what it means to be a woman, or like even what it means to be a young person in Hollywood. And I definitely feel like it is changing because someone like Olivia Wilde, who was a beautiful, beautiful woman, is like taken seriously, which is very hard to be taken seriously when you look a certain way and people just assume certain things about you. And I know she had to fight for that, you know? It was very empowering to see someone like that that's just like super cool, super intelligent, super funny, directing, you know? Like, mm -hmm. and she's a woman. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of female directors. And she's an actress that is directing. I mean, I've been really fortunate I haven't dealt with anything shady in either industry yet. Um, I don't know what's going on with modeling, have kind of been out of the loop in that world. But I definitely, I also know that actresses have more of a voice and more of an opinion 
than models do mm -hmm. because models are just seen as hangers. They're not seen as full people. They're not seen as people with ideas. They're, they're seen as hangers and actresses are like, they bring something, you know, because they're actresses, they have a thing. Um, so I definitely feel like how I'm treated on an acting set is a lot different than how I'm treated on a model set. Mm -hmm. I don't need to say more. <laughs> <than that. laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank and you. I can't wait to see where this life takes you. I'm excited. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Now see how amazing she is and wonderful and beautiful and smart I'm and average. intelligent. I actually think I think a casting director once requested to see me after see, like come, stumbling upon one of your vlogs. I, I just remember I like just remember that. I don't think that movie's getting made, but <laughs> I was very close to being in a not happening movie. Oh so God. it's pretty big deal. Well, hell yeah, that's amazing. So random. Oh my God. Oh, well, look at that. Okay, I hope that you guys have an amazing rest of your day, and I will see you next week. Thank you, Diana. I love you. I love you. Ow! Also, Duane's engaged, and this is a big deal. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, I just got stuck on, you know.